It's a Locked On crossover, Iron Bowl edition, Locked On Auburn, Locked On Bama. I'm Zach Blackerby. He is Luke Robinson. It's finally here. It's finally here. It's Iron Bowl week. Happy Thanksgiving to everyone. And I think, Luke, the biggest thing from the Auburn perspective of this is, boy, we were a lot more excited about this game a week ago than we, <laughs> than we are now. I think that's kind of... I think that's kind of where we're at. I think a lot of Auburn fans, myself included, thought Auburn would be riding a four-game winning streak going into the Iron Bowl, feeling good about ourselves. Hey, we finally righted the ship. Hey, we finally figured it out. And that's not really that's not really where we're at after losing to New Mexico State last week. You know, that's something that uh, Jimmy Stein and I talked about in the last podcast is it went from feeling like, oh, God, it's yeah. Iron Bowl week. And look, as an Alabama fan, there's no more – angst-filled week of the year. I've had four children. Sure. And um, I, right before their deliveries, I never felt as much angst as I do before an Iron Bowl. Um, because I, I grew up very close to Auburn. And um, I can tell you that uh, this this rivalry means a lot to me. I mean, they're, they're Alabama fans say, ah, oh, Tennessee's more, LSU's more. And, uh, that's BS to me. I mean, I'm, people say that. I, don't, I think people who say that are trying too hard to like act like Auburn's not a thing. That, that That's what that feels like to me. I think that's part of it. I yeah. think there there are also uh, North Alabamian Bammers who really do believe that about Tennessee, just like there are some uh, Auburn folks who live in Georgia who who kind of feel that way about Georgia, and they, they feel that way more about Georgia now because Georgia's success. Sure. But, um, and then there are Alabama fans that that truly do feel that way about LSU because, frankly, that has been the rivalry in the SEC over the last decade and a half. So I understand that. But for me personally, and just where this thing falls on the calendar, and the fact that Alabama always has to play Auburn before the SEC title game, and that right. has been a nightmare. Um, I mean, I just go back to 2021. I mean, there, there was no business for Auburn being in that game, especially with who they were coached by, and um, especially who was quarterback in Alabama. And, um, you know, it took an act of Congress for Alabama to win it. The four overtime, is that the weirdest Iron Bowl? And there's been some weird ones, but I think just as far as like big picture, like where that team was, where Alabama was, who was on each roster, like that's probably the weirdest one to me. Like there's no reason that should have happened. It's definitely up there. And that's why, you know, this is the best rivalry in the country. Um, you can talk about Michigan, Ohio State. And I mean, look, it's great. It's great. But they're, they're not in state. They They don't have like a lot of mixed families and stuff like that. And the, but you think Luke, about this, Luke, this is the first Thanksgiving weekend that I haven't spent in Columbus, Ohio in several years. We're staying home this year. It's where my family, where my wife's family is from. Good for you. And, and I sit and watch the game with them because it's usually before the iron bowl. And it's just not comparable. I'm sitting in a room full of Ohio state grads and it's just, it's not, it's not comparable. Like get out of here with all this, you know, and, I know Michigan and Ohio State are both very good right now and good for them, sign stealing and all, but it's just, it's not comparable. This is the best rivalry in all of, uh, all of college football. And I would, I would say this, that uh, probably historically that Michigan, Ohio State has meant more nationally. It's meant more to, but in terms of just the, the again, the angst, and th this is, it's not close. It's not even in the same area code. And, um, you know, it, you talked about the weirdness of this. I mean, how many games, think about 92 Alabama, the, maybe the greatest defense of all time in college football history, and it's 0-0 at halftime. Now, mm -hmm. I mean, I remember watching like Alabama ends up winning 17-0, Antonio Langham scores a defense touchdown. Uh, then you talk about 94 where uh, it's it literally the spot of the ball, you could have slid a credit card in between the nose of the ball and the down marker, and that's how close it was uh, to Auburn getting a first down and continuing that drive. Alabama wins 21-14. The, the kick six, uh, Lawyer Tillman's reverse, the, the kick by Van Tiffin. I, I mean, you just go down the list. Yeah. Yeah, that 2021 game was really, really weird because here's the other thing. Alabama's best receiver gets thrown out of the game for targeting on a – punt return coverage. That's, That's right. So weird. I mean, yeah. and um, it's just bizarre things happen in this game. And that's why, look, I, yes, I feel better about this game now because Auburn lost New Mexico State and the fact sure. that 
it does feel like Auburn is kind of still in a fog. Like that that loss was so bad, it wasn't fluky. I mean, New Mexico State looked like the better team, and it was just oh, they lined up and beat them, Luke. Yeah. They lined up and beat them for for sixty minutes. Uh, there's no question about that. I think the narrative that a lot of Auburn fans, and I'll put myself in this in this bucket as well. If Hugh Freeze somehow pulls this off, I think the national narrative that forms around Hugh Freeze is he's the guy who could beat Nick Saban. He is Nick Saban's kryptonite because of what he did at Ole Miss. And then obviously, if he can beat Nick Saban with this Auburn roster, that I think that's what Auburn's playing for right now. And sure, it'd be a better bowl game. And sure, I think a lot of folks would say, hey, it's a successful season because you beat Alabama and you went seven and five the first year of the Hugh Freeze era. I think all that's great. I think all that's great. But to me, that's the biggest narrative from the Auburn point of view is if Hugh Freeze can do this, Luke, if Hugh Freeze can can somehow pull off this upset on Saturday, nationally, he's known as the guy who can consistently beat Nick Saban no matter where he's at. I think that's a good point, and I think this is also about the, the battle of the team that loses focus the least because obviously Auburn lost focus last week. Now, sure. will Alabama fall tr- victim to that this week by losing focus? Because, you know, the only thing that people are talking about, uh, outside of me, again, I, this game means a ton to me personally, okay? Yeah. So, uh, outside of me, uh, everybody's talking about how can Alabama get in the playoffs? How can you put Alabama ahead of Texas? How can Alabama go ahead of Oregon? How can blah, blah, blah? And um, how can which Alabama is, Which is a bogus playoffs? question. When the SEC and you're in. I totally agree. I understand the narrative of Texas beat Alabama head to head. I also understand the narrative of you got to look at the body of work. And frankly, I have no idea why. No offense to Bo Nix, who's had a wonderful year. I have no idea why Oregon's ahead of Texas and Alabama, for that matter. I mean, they all have one loss. Oregon has no top 25 wins. And the the, the best win they have is a loss to Washington. That's, that's got sort of weird to me. But my point is. The college football playoff committee loves quality losses. They love it. They do. That's true. Um, well, Alabama's got one. You would think it means something. And, yeah, well, they're top ten. They're top ten and, for it. And Texas yeah. is is being devalued all the time. So anyway, um, yeah. What I'm worried about is Alabama's lack of focus. And here's the other thing. You know, again, Auburn fans won't like to hear this, but the the truth of the matter is, they don't like you anyway, Luke. It's I fine. know they don't, and that's okay. Yeah. I understand. I'll tell you something. I love Auburn, the community. I love Auburn the University. They bought a bunch of stuff from our company, which I truly appreciate. Sure. I, I love the city. I love Tiger Town as much as anybody. Hey, Tiger Town's great. They got a full Opelika, food. for sure. That's fine. Yeah. Right. You know what I mean. <laughs> they, they do have a full food. That's true. Iceberg Goldberg. Um, but uh yeah, when it comes to this, you're not supposed to like me. That's why it's the greatest rivalry. Yeah. <laughs> you're not supposed to like me and Jimmy. I mean, I, I'm throwing Jimmy in because I don't want to be by myself. Um <laughs> You're but, my hey, uh, you're you're my favorite bammer. I'll say it. Thank you. I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm just I'm worried a little bit about uh I'm worried about oh what I was gonna say was uh yeah, Auburn fans are gonna like me for this, but here's the deal. When Alabama and Auburn play at, in the last 15 years, plus or minus, now I mean 2013 notwithstanding, 2010 notwithstanding, 2017 notwithstanding, but for okay. the most part, Alabama's playing the next week and uh, usually playing to to mean something, like to get into the playoffs. Sure. Auburn can treat this as a the biggest game on the schedule. Alabama doesn't have that luxury. It, it's it, it may sound like I'm being a homer. At the same time, I think it's also true if you're going to talk about facts. And you know, when you go to 2021, can you imagine telling somebody, "Hey, Bryce Young in Alabama took four overtimes to beat a Brian Harson team quarterback by a bad T.J. Finley." Mm-hmm. Then they go and beat Georgia. Like they stole something in the SEC title game. A Georgia team, by the way, that won the national championship. That didn't even make sense back-to-back weeks. Yeah, no, I I think you're right. And I think that's kind of what Auburn people are holding on to is like, okay, what happens the week before doesn't always matter the following week. And I think that's what Auburn folks are, uh, are holding on to. So let's talk about who could be some potential Iron Bowl heroes, some players to watch. That's coming up. Just a moment right here on this Locked On Iron Bowl edition of Locked On Auburn and Locked On Bama. Luke, today's show is brought to you by our friends at Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to play daily fantasy sports. Do you like to win 25 times your money, Luke Robinson? I love to win 25 times my money. Yeah, and it's so easy with Prize Picks. 
It's just you against the numbers instead of battling against thousands of other players, including pros and sharks like Luke. You just pick more than or less than two to six player stat projections. And then you watch the winnings roll in. Luke, what's the biggest thing you've ever won in your life? Oh, the biggest. Oh, I did come in third place in a poker tournament in Vegas one okay. time. And I think I won $6,500. Okay. You can blow that out of the water out of with the water. prize picks. Just go to uh, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college. You get a first deposit match of up to a hundred dollars. You're already winning before you even play, or they've got a great mobile app. Just search prize picks in your phone's app store. And when you make that first deposit, use code locked on college prize picks. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. Potential iron bowl heroes. There's been a lot of them. Chris Davis is probably my personal favorite iron bowl hero, but but That's so easy. That's so cliche and lazy. Pick another one. No, it's a 10 year anniversary. I'm just being festive. I know. And y'all are going to milk this 10 year anniversary. <laughs> Like it is a bloated cow. I know, and and that's why I can't go to the game. I can't go and watch this this montage. Like every commercial break is going to be Chris Davis. I get it every every uh, time. As out. it should be. As it should I know, be. I know. I know. If, I, if there's like a twenty second slot, you put the Chris Davis highlight in. One hundred percent. When when Bill Reichert is kicking for the NCAA record for points scored, y'all are going to put that on the jumbo trying. Hopefully he's kicking that way for y'all and not towards that scoreboard that looks like it belongs at a a 3A high school. That's right. That's right. Uh, Potential Iron Bowl heroes. I I think if Auburn's going to pull this off, they've got to make it chaotic because if, if this just lines up and both teams are playing football straight up, there's really only one position matchup that I like Auburn. The rest of them, I think, favor Alabama. I, I, and I'm not even super confident in saying I like Auburn's defensive backs over Alabama's wide receivers, but that's the matchup I like the best for Auburn. I think everything else goes in Alabama's favor. So if they're going to pull this off, Luke, Auburn's got to make it ugly, and I think you do that by rushing the passer. And so I'm going to look at uh, McLeod, Jalen uh, McLeod, McLeod. Can he rush the passer? Can he get to Milrow? early and often throughout this game. Uh, to me, I think he could be a potential Iron Bowl hero if Auburn were to pull this off. I think that's a good call. Um, I do think it's a good call about the wide receivers against the defensive backs. I like Auburn's defensive backs a lot. Alabama's receivers, I, I like them. I'm still waiting on one to become the dude. I mean, Jermaine Burton has been certainly a lot better. Um, yeah. but, I mean, there's nobody in the Jerry Judy, Henry Ruggs, Devontae Smith, uh, Jalen Waddle category right now, in my opinion, uh, probably nobody really all that close. But I keep waiting on an Isaiah Bond. Isaiah Bond's had some nice catches, some nice deep catches, um, and he's getting there. Yeah. But I, I need somebody to have their moment. And then, ironically, you know, we've been talking about 2021. Jacory Brooks was one of the heroes of 2021, and we hadn't heard hide nor hair from him. He's been a little injured, been a little banged up, um, and it just hadn't come together for him this year. But I do like that matchup, and I'll tell you one that that scares me a little. Even though he's the, the offensive line for Alabama has been better of late, yeah. a lot better. Yeah, um, the full think, season stats don't tell the story. I think about Alabama's offensive line. Oh, I don't think there's any doubt. And then you know they did give up a sack or two against uh, Chattanooga, but they didn't give up any against Kentucky. Uh, I would also say against Chattanooga, it was more about I think Jalen Milrow was like I'm, I'm going to stand in the pocket and try and hit some dudes this time instead of taking off. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, I am still worried about, you know, Caden Proctor's gotten a lot better, but he is a true freshman. And like you said, McLeod has certainly been playing very, very well. And, you know, we're still trying to understand if Jalen Milrow can hit that intermediate pass. I would love to see us hit some slants. I think if we can hit some slants, I, and I think that opens up everything, uh, yeah. some quick slants. Um, but, yeah, I think the hero needs to be Jalen Milrow. And here's the thing about Milrow to me. He's playing kind of like an Auburn quarterback. And I mean, that, mean it this way. Alabama is more business-like. I think we all agree there. Auburn is the more fun school. I've always said when Auburn wins, they have more fun than Alabama fans because Alabama fans really spend more time talking about what else we could have done to make the score even a wider margin versus enjoying the moment sometimes. Was it always Um, like that? Like early in the Saban era, was it like that? I don't think so because we we had had such a hard time. And then we start, you know, just – slapping everybody around and and you know we yeah. get into that Saban mode of this is not the end this is the beginning and so we never treat it like hey let's right. have a big party you know mm-hmm. um but I think that 
Jalen Milrow is a little different than some of our more business-like uh, quarterbacks of the past. He is out there having fun. And, and look, he's he's got a gazillion dollar smile. He uh, In the post-game interviews, he's now got this thing where he just goes roll tide in different ways, um, which is not something we hear a lot from Alabama quarterbacks. Again, Auburn folks do that. They they have a lot more you know, war eagle about them when, with some of their players. Alabama players are a little bit more about the business. Are you saying our quarterbacks are more handsome, Luke? I don't know about the better handsome. smiles. Although, I mean, they, look, I mean, you know, look, you hate, hate Cam Newton all you want to. He's a good looking dude, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. you don't hate him. But, um, Jarrett Stidham, beautiful man. Jarrett Stidham is a good looking dude. You know, Jimmy Stone right. and I used to do uh, the uh, like an Alabama beauty pageant uh, way back in the day. And um, I think that like y'all competed in it or y'all were like judges. No, we, we sort of just stacked up everybody's roster picture. And then we also got one famous Alabama alum that's female. Um, and I can't, well, I say famous and I can't remember any of their names, but they're all pretty, they were all pretty big deals. Like one of them was on the bachelor or something. And so we would have them come and help us judge. And we, you know, we were trying to be uh, pretty authentic about it. And it was just all about uh, trying to be inclusive as, as best we could. Well, I respect that. I respect that. All right, so you, you got Milrow. I, I'll give you another one on the offensive side of the ball. If Auburn's going to do this, Jarquest Hunter's got to get going. I think Auburn's offensive line has the ability to do it as far as create running lanes for them. We'll see, but they've got to approach the game, I think, differently in several different ways than what they did against New Mexico State. Jarquest Hunter had eight carries. That's too low. If they're going to pull this off, they've got to keep the football for long periods of time, and Jarquez Hunter has to create um, solid run after solid run after solid run. So, uh, to me, I, I think if Auburn's going to pull this off, Jarquez Hunter needs to be an Iron Bowl hero for this. Yeah, I'm with you on that. I would also love to see if you want to talk about it on that. By the way, I like Jarquez Hunter a lot. I appreciate the fact that he's another very cool. handsome individual. He is a very handsome individual, um, and. Uh, you know, I appreciate the fact that he sort of dealt with some controversy in in the summer and he's overcome that. And it took him a little bit of time, obviously, uh, when you don't practice for a little bit, et cetera. But uh, he, he certainly, looked hurt. He looked banged up. He did look a little, a little hurt. Um, I don't think it I don't think it was a lack of practice. He only missed like a few days of practice. I, I have no problem saying this. Like when everybody was so high on him in the previous years, I thought, yeah, he's he's doing pretty good because Tank Bigsby sort of loosens up everybody and beats everybody to death, then Jarquez can come in there and clean up the mess. And frankly, he's he's shown me he's more of a number one back this year. So, yeah, I think you're right on that call. He's been solid. Yeah. He's been very solid. He's going to, you know, he's if it wasn't for a bad performance and only eight carries against New Mexico State, he's going to have a 1,000 yards. If you factor in Alabama in the bowl game, you would think, right? I mean, because we all assumed he was going to get 125 this last week. Yeah, I mean, he's close. He's close to it. I think he's at 770-something, um, but – um. That that's he needed like two fifty last week, so that sounds right. Um, for Alabama on the defensive side, I, I'm number one. I'm concerned a little bit about injuries. Deontay Lawson, Jalen Key have been banged up. They didn't play last week, uh, and I would like to see uh, both of those guys back and, and healthy because Christian Story, who I love, I've always said Christian Story the best. Christian story since Jonah and the whale. Um, he, I know, I'm sorry. I had to put that in there. You're looking around. I, I know. I love it. I love that line. I, I'm going to use it. How many times have you said that? You think several. I, I've even tweeted it. Um, but wow. anyway, you tweeted it. Wow. <laughs> How long did it take you to tweet that loop? I, it takes me a while. People know uh, in terms of in yeah. terms of tech savvy, Jimmy and I are on the bottom rung of the locked on family. Had um, no idea. But you know, Christian Story, while he had an interception last week, while he's had some moments, I mean, he, he's done some good things. He yeah. still didn't have the experience. You go back to the LSU game, he's the one that gave up the touchdown right before half that allowed LSU to tie it up because he went for an interception versus trying to keep the man in bounds and tackling. Right. Um, but I want to see Jalen Key back out there. And the other thing, I want to make sure Alabama gets a pass rush and and they contain Peyton Thorne. Peyton Thorne's a better runner than you think. And um, – Alabama has to contain him because he did break off what a 60 yarder against Georgia. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. He's the way he's handled. It's like, he's so he doesn't want to stand in the pocket for very long. So it's like, he'll read one or two guys or go to one or two guys in the progression. And then he'll scramble for like three yards. So is that being gun shy because he's been pressured a lot because of the line you think? 
think he's so afraid to make a mistake, man. Uh, I think it's more that than anything else. Um, because he's got time. Thing. He runs before before guys. Are, and then sometimes, I mean, the pass rush wins. But I don't think that's like some major issue throughout this season. I, 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 don't, I think he could trust his offensive line more. Now, I know I'm a lot older than you are. But let me say this, too, that I thought about this today about in, in terms of how the rivalry feels. Yeah. There was something a little more special back in the day. And I'm not trying to discount, you know, some of the games that have been great over the last, last 15, 20 years. But you go back to the 90s and the, when your quarterbacks are Patrick Nix and Jay Barker, you know, two dudes from the state of Alabama. Um when you, when you have stuff like that and you have more Alab state of Alabama homegrown heroes, it makes it a little bit more interesting. Now, nationally, again, the game has become more relevant. Um, yeah. And Alabama and Auburn are casting a much wider net when it comes to recruiting. But there was something pretty cool when you – I mean, it's two former high school rivals going at it versus, you know, Alabama's got a quarterback from Texas, who I love. By the way, I bought this Roback thing right here because of him because he's sponsored by Roback. And then Very Auburn's cool. got a quarterback who transferred in from Michigan State. I don't even know where he's from originally. So, I mean, it's just a little different, right? I believe he's from Illinois. Okay. Yeah. They're all the same. That's all a big amalgam up there. Yeah. All Midwest states are the same. I'm totally yeah. there with you. But yeah, you're right. And like the future of Auburn's quarterback position, like, you know, Hank Brown's from Tennessee, Walker White's from Arkansas. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm with you. Julian Stans from California, Bryce Young from California, Tua from California. I mean, it's it's just kind of nutty. You know where Jarrett Stidham's from? Texas, right? Yeah, Jared said it was from Texas. That was the that was the meme. Yeah. We just we just leaned into the meme. We're very online right now. Okay, uh, all right. Let's discuss our friends at LinkedIn Jobs. Then a little prediction action. But LinkedIn Jobs is the best place to find qualified candidates for your uh, your company for free. Luke, you hire a lot of people. Have you used LinkedIn Jobs? We have love LinkedIn Jobs. It is fantastic. It's so easy to do. All you got to do is go to LinkedIn Jobs and add that purple hashtag hiring frame. People will know. People will know that you're hiring. So LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions, they apply. Prediction time for the Iron Bowl. Our friends at FanDuel, as we record this, have the line set at 14 and a half in Alabama's favor. Luke, I like that line. That's a tough one for me to pick, if I'm being honest, which usually means it's a good line. I think Alabama covers it. That's where I'm leaning. Is Alabama covering the 14 and a half? Where are you on this? Boy, I wish I were making this prediction later in the week so that I could get more of a sense about where the, the Auburn community is with the Auburn fan base is with everything, because I think a lot's going to depend on that. Look, one of the Alabama players, I think it was Tyler Booker said, hey, folks have always told us that Jordan Hare sometimes gives Auburn players superpowers. And I think Auburn's home field advantage when it's, you know, turned up to 11 is about as much of a home field advantage as anywhere. Yeah. Obviously, there are other times when the home field advantage is uh, the least it can be, like last week or against A&M in 2012, whatever. Sure. Um, but I've, I'm so I'm curious, is this going to be turned up to 11 or is this going to be around a seven? If it's not, if it's not turned up to 11, I like Alabama big. If it they is just, turned up. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if it's going to be turned up to 11. I don't know if it's going to be like 2017 or 2019 Iron Bowl, but I do think there's energy. I do think a lot of the Auburn fan base believes that something can happen, but there's a big chunk that are discouraged from what happened a week ago. And there's a lot of folks that are saying, hey, let, let's focus on basketball right now or go ahead and focus on early signing day because I think Auburn's got a ton of momentum with, uh, with, a, with, a, with a lot of guys. So I don't know. I don't know, but if you get into Jordan Hare Stadium, you're an Auburn fan, and they start playing, you know, the kick six and Rod's call, and you know all of the the pregame videos that they play everywhere. But you're you're going to get in the zone. I think you're going to get fired up. To me, I think it's that first quarter. If Auburn can handle the first quarter like they did against Georgia earlier in the season, then I think they've got a chance, and I think Jordan Hare will believe, and I think Auburn will have a chance at home. My biggest fear for this game, and it's kind of what I think is going to happen, is I think Milrow is going to get the ball and they're going to go on a drive and it's going to be 7 nothing, really, really quick. And then we see, okay, what version of this Auburn offense do we see? Do we see the Auburn offense that popped up on the road at Cal? 
Do we see the Auburn offense that showed up last week where it's just what in the world are we doing? Where is this identity? Or are we going to see an Auburn offense that could score at will against Arkansas and Mississippi State and Vanderbilt? I don't know. I don't know, Luke. This team has been so up and down and so all over the place offensively. If Auburn goes out and has a quick three and out and Alabama scores quickly, I think this gets ugly. That's why I want Auburn to start out with the ball. I really do. I think Alabama's strength, uh, even though Jalen Milrow has been fantastic lately, I think their strength still is the defense with Dallas yeah. Turner and Malachi Moore and Kool-Aid and yada, yada, yada. And um, I also think it's going to be really interesting. Let's see who goes out there for punt return for Alabama. That's the other thing This oh, okay. uh, looking, I'm looking forward to because if it's Caleb Downs, hey, look, all Caleb Downs did was return a punt for a touchdown in his second attempt. And Kool-Aid, God bless him, he was like second in the country in punt returns last year. He, for whatever reason, it's not coming together for him this year. And he's still the best cornerback in the country. He's going to go in the top 10 of the NFL draft. Yeah. But it's just not working punt return wise. Like every decision is sort of just not going. But Caleb Downs is Caleb Downs is him. I mean, he's a dude. And um, he's just got something special about him. So I'd love to see him go back. And Jimmy and I talked about, aren't you kind of scared that uh, you have this true freshman going back there in Jordan Hare Stadium? It's going to be raucous and bananas. And I said, I would be scared for just about anybody else except Caleb Downs. My score prediction, I think I'm going to go with 35-14. Okay, I'm going to top you. It's funny you pick Alabama to cover because I'm going to go 28-14. And um, I think Auburn gets one touchdown in a weird way. I mean, you go back to 2011, they scored two touchdowns. Neither one of them was on offense. Um, I feel Auburn like has not run a trick play this year. Because I think you have to have confidence in your regular plays to be able to run a trick play, honestly. Maybe. I don't know, dude. But like if they're gonna win on Saturday, I think there's gonna be some sort of gimmick. I think I think there has to be. Could be. Um it, it wouldn't shock me. I mean, it look, this is one of those <laughs> throw the kitchen sink out. I know again, talk about cliche. I think this is one of those, hey, this is Auburn right. would much rather win this than win the bowl game. I mean, so this treat this like your bowl game. I mean, obviously, Dude, in the current the current state of of college football, who even is going to be on the roster for the bowl game? True. Um, I I will say this though, and again, maybe this is just the traditionalist part of me not wanting college football to die as we know it, but I think the bowl game will be as important to Auburn as it will be to anybody because they need the extra practice, and I think it'll be good for momentum going in. I think most bowl games are just sort of you know blasé, but I think for Auburn, it's going to mean more than for most. Yeah, I think Hugh Freeze cares. He seems to care about bowl games too. So we'll see if that trickles down to the players. Uh, Luke, this is fun every year that we get to do this. Have a great Thanksgiving. What's your favorite Thanksgiving side? Just real quick. Let me say this, and this another reason for your fans to hate me. Thanksgiving is my least favorite holiday of all of them. I'm talking about it's beneath Arbor Day. Uh, it's beneath everything um, because I, there's everything on the table that you eat is brown. First of all, I don't like deli meats and I don't like turkey. So I always try to get somebody to cook a beef tenderloin or, you know, some fillets or something. Which We're having a roast. You should come to our house. I dig that. Uh, but then all of the side, you know, you got sweet potato casserole and green bean casserole and, you know, something else brown. Everything's brown. I want something. Uh -huh. Give me some color, baby. And, uh, you know, that's, that's just me. Maybe I'm at the wrong house eating Thanksgiving. Well, you can cook whatever you want. I could. And, um, you know, I'm getting there. The older I get, the more I'm like, maybe I just need Thanksgiving for one. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so no Thanksgiving side. No, no. My favorite Thanksgiving side is usually dessert. Whatever the, the dessert is. Yeah. I'm, I'm a sweet tooth guy. That's yeah. why I'm chunky and getting double chinned. I hate All seeing right. you on this camera, by the way, I'm, I'm seeing the extra chins. I think you look great. I think you look great. This has been a special Locked On Iron Bowl edition. I'm Zach Blackerby with Locked On Auburn. He is Luke Robinson with Locked On.